most women give advice from a, a selfish place. And and the reality is that no woman dates a guy who she doesn't think is better than her. Better is a relative term. I agree. From her perspective. I agree. Most women have no idea what they're talking about and give horrible advice. What do you find is the, the most common mistake that guys make? I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Good up for Marty Good up. the Wing Girl. Good up, Marty. Hi, Thank guys. You. Thanks for coming. Thanks for Thanks coming for on. This is going to be good. You know why? I have a philosophy about I have a philosophy about lady wing girls. I say never ask a woman uh, any relationship advice. That's my that's my my I hear you. I agree with that. Most women have no idea what they're talking about and give horrible advice. OK. Oh, they, wow. Perfection. Wow. Well, thank you, everybody. This has been a great place. podcast. This is a good podcast. It. We're just going to shut it down. You want to do <laughs> yeah, your plugs? Exactly. Don't listen to me. <laughs> but I will. I'll tell you something. Most women give advice from a they don't mean to do it but it's from a a not a, a selfish place for themselves because they advise men but in their mind they're thinking about men that they're already attracted to so that advice that they're putting out there isn't for men who are my clients or for men who potentially listen to this podcast right. therefore men who are already getting the attraction and have the success with women well, you know, it's funny. It's funny you say that because um, I I put it a little different. I said, if you want to know how to hunt deer, you ask the hunter, not the deer. Yeah. So, oh, trust me. I get that. I get that statement on my YouTube channel all the time. Don't <laughs> ask a fish how to catch a fish. I, I hear I get it. I totally understand. Right. As I said, most women are bad at it. And and I and I and you know I think that there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, I, I think that you know that takes a level of empathy to to see it from somebody else's perspective who who from for the most part you know doesn't even doesn't doesn't have that experience to sure. it, it takes a lot of empathy and to 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 look at it from somebody else's perspective and say if i was in this perspective these are the these are the obstacles and stuff that i would have to deal with yeah. So well, even even as a woman to be ego free and say out loud the things that you're actually attracted to that may potentially make you sound superficial. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not things that women want to be announcing all the time. So that's how, that's more challenging for women. And on the flip side, it's really difficult to understand men and the position that men that are listening to this show or men that I work with, what they're going through on a day to day basis, because a lot of women have a different perception of men. They think of men who are players, men who are jerks, men who are constantly leaving them or leading them on. So they don't see this whole other side of unbelievable, awesome men who have a little bit lower confidence with women and uh, who don't have the comfort levels to do the things that these other guys do. I think also, you know, when a lot of times you have women who are pursuing these guys who are, um, you know, what they call players and say, because they're picking those guys. Yep. And a lot of times they don't have the value to step up to those guys in the first place. And so a, a, a guy who's accustomed to being, a, you know, having women attracted to or having women approach them and then you're, you know, you're a five and you're like, oh, I'm going to give him. And, and he and he's like, oh, Yo, you want some you want some free pussy? And he was like, yeah, I'll take some. And then all of a sudden she in her mind, she's created this relationship. What up, Dre? Hi. <laughs> hey, Andre. The, the, uh, he's you know, and then she's created, you know, they, she's created this whole movie in her head about how she thinks this is going to play out and yep. never even considered. That he don't like you. He, uh, you know, that there was that book. He goes like, yes. he's not that into you. He's just not like, that into you. Uh, yeah. Or like that you. I'm going to make him like me because I'm going to do all my tricks that I know of as a woman to change that around. And we become, we become fixated on these guys as challenges for us. Oh, yeah, I, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. Totally. And then, and then the ego, the ego comes into play where because of her ego and the fact that she, then she doesn't even know if she really likes this guy. It becomes more about the Most challenge. Most often they don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She she doesn't mm -hmm. like him. And now it becomes about the pursuit. And then as the and as long as he doesn't fall victim to the pursuit, she'll never even question whether she really likes him in the first place, because it's not the point. It's about the win. And so removing the ego. Marty, can I ask you, how do you get into being a wing girl? Like, how does this come about for you? How did this uh, I was happen? drunk at a rabbi's house and I made a joke after having a very successful night of introducing men to women and helping them uh, get numbers and get get the attraction that they've always wanted. So 
I went to the singles mixer and I did not like anybody there. So I chose to help the guys that were there go up and approach women, help them start conversations when it was going well. I would leave. That's hilarious. I would give them feedback afterwards. Mm. And then I came home and I, I was a little bit tipsy. And I said to my roommate, I loved what I did. This was so much fun. I want to be a wing girl for guys. I want to tell them what women want. And he's like, no way. Guys mm. will never want that service. Exactly what you said before. Like they don't want to ask a fish how to catch the fish or whatever. No, the fish I, I don't I don't think I don't think that guys won't do it. I just think that for the most right, part, they, right. they shouldn't do it because most women don't have the empathy and can't remove the ego to look at right. it from us perspective. I mean, and that was his exact point of view as well. He's like, guys don't want this. You'd have to like throw in sexual favors in order for them to pay you to give them any advice. That's what that's what he said, which I actually was glad that he said all of that because I I don't like hearing the word no. If he just said yes, I would have laughed about the idea and never and thought about it again. Mm -hmm. He said no. And I said, I don't think you're right. I went into my room, posted an ad on Craigslist, 1.30 in the morning. By the next morning, I had over 75 guys who were interested in this concept because mm -hmm. at that time it didn't exist. And so I started. And then the first six months, it was a live interactive service. I had 23 girls working with me and we went out with men in teams of two and we helped pick up women for men. But then I started to notice that most of these men really wanted a lot of information from us. They didn't have the basic skills down. Like you were talking before about other guys who are really good with women. They mm -hmm. built up this yeah, that's just the ten thousand hour. It's definitely yeah, a 10, exactly. Hour thing, huh? Yeah, I just read that book. That's funny that you just mentioned it. But like Malcolm Gladwell, they, yeah, ten thousand hours. They, yeah, they have that, and the guys that I was going out and coaching didn't have that basic level either. They didn't have a good father figure, or they didn't have lots of guy friends who were successful with women. They didn't have that example to learn from, and they didn't also have an understanding of women. So they ended up asking me tons of questions, mm -hmm. and then I learned from that experience that I need right. to provide them with the basics first. And then that's how my, my company started. And it's been now, 17. what's the, um, how many years? 17. Wow. Wow. And that's what you do full time now. That's what I do full time. I've worked with hundreds of thousands of men all over the world. That's and dope. I tell them what women want. Now, did you start with, was this like a Jewish mixer or I, I yes. heard you said something. Oh, okay. Okay. So, now here's, here's hence the, the rabbi. It would have been really hence the rabbi. It really weird been hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> well, now here's here's the thing. I I um, man, like Jewish guys that I've consulted because I mean I I've been consulting with guys for much less time because I just I I uh I just I would just give it away. Like I used to give like I I I would be a play in a place and somebody would be like their body posture would be and I'm like yo come here. Oh, that's amazing. Like what are you what are you doing? Like, what you, and I kept, you know, I would do that. Harry would, uh, you know, like I yeah. would just, Harry will say, I'll hear somebody say happy life, happy wife. And I'll go, eh, I got, come, come here. I need to talk to you. And so, yeah, uh, um, all the time on the street. I love that. Wherever. And that had to be, that had to be, as long as you've known me, right? Huh? I mean, definitely I mean, as long as Dre know me, right? For sure. I mean, that's how we started. If we, if we just go from the time we just started the podcast before that, it's been nine years of helping people. Wow. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure you were helping people before that. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was, so I was a male stripper for 10 years. Oh, and wow. so I had that, I had to understand you in order to understand female attraction, mm -hmm. you, if you can't understand that, you don't, you don't eat. You know, yeah. and then I ran and I, I ran. I managed a few ladies on the, on the escort side, and so I I had to deal with the the relationships of that and the and the the, the aspect of that. So so you um, get the psychology of it. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah I mean, a yeah. practical. You know, the practical. I mean, if you go to a therapist and you they talk, yeah, okay, he's learned all, but he don't have the case study that I you yeah. know I, I literally was in it. So um. What's, so it's just it was just something that I always did. And I, I didn't think it was something I could do until we started. To do it. And even after the podcast, I, I just was doing it for free. I was just giving it away. So I know which is I probably should have met you 17 years ago. Right, exactly. No, but that but honestly, that gave you your base in the very yeah. beginning. I felt like I was giving it away. I had people who would pay for a three hour outing with me for a very minimal cost. I would end up being with them for seven hours because I loved it. What, what do you charge for something like that? Like a three hour outing? So I, now I really don't do them very much anymore. Most of my stuff is online, but I charge three thousand dollars for three thousand for three hours. An hour, three. That's great. That's great to go out with them. I, I, you know, it's an interesting thing 
because uh I, I just don't want to go out with nobody. You know no, I mean? no, like, no. That's why yeah. I don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like I have two children now and a husband. I'm like, go. I, I fall asleep by nine o'clock. I have other girls who now right. go out with people and do that. But, stuff. You, but, but you have plenty of information and stuff. Oh, on gosh. YouTube yes. And, and I, all I over the keep place. up to date with my information. I do a podcast once a week. Um, I interview five different women every single week, different ages, different races, different uh, places that they live. So I can keep up with what's going on in in the dating space now yeah. let me ask you this do you really think it's that it, it's really that different i mean I, I understand that in terms of like social media in terms of dating apps yeah. and stuff those things change but the but the no. basic principles is all the same all did, absolutely all the same i don't know did you ever read the book um by david buss called the evolution of desire no i've never read it's that a really good book so yeah. he he i'm gonna totally gonna quote this incorrectly but you'll get the gist of what i'm gonna say but so he he went around the world and he would research tons of different cultures about what attraction meant to them, mainly women. So he went to tribes in Africa. He went to New York City. He went to China, like South, all over the world, looking to see what the basic fundamentals were for attraction. And he found there was a collective of, I think it's like 10 different things that build up attraction for women. And they're, they're standard. They are a standard across the world. There were a few different uh, variations based on different societies, but most of them all fell into the exact same categories and all ranked them in the same order as well. So it's, what, it's what were some of those uh, things? Oh God, it's uh, intelligence, social proof, social circle, um, uh, status was one of them. I haven't read that book in so long, but like I, for, I forgot what the other ones were. But they're they're the basics. So like what you were talking about. What's the name about, of the book again? Let me. I'll, it's called I'll, The Evolution of Desire by David okay. Buss. So he's uh he's a professor at Harvard or mm. or uh, in Boston. I, I somewhere else. I forget. Um, I always love when those professors get fed up podcast. with studying medicine and go, you know what? I've had <laughs> enough. Of, I'm going to write a book women. on how to fuck. Yeah. I've had <laughs> yeah. enough of looking at this, tele this microscope. Well, you know, I, 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 your platforms. Yeah. Well, like I had a lot of practical, practical kind of knowledge, but the thing that really kind of flipped me, I read, uh, we actually had him on the show. was uh, Dr. We had Christopher, Christopher Ryan, Ryan. Sex at Dawn. He wrote this book called Sex at Dawn. <laughs> And it deals with it really deals with the instinctual aspect of attraction, like on a base, on a real visceral level, which is something that's a, it's, uh, you know, I've, I've, I haven't read it in a long time, but it so you find out kind of that there is this there is this I, I mean, I don't have to tell you, but there's a subtext in, in everything that you do. There's this subtext. Um, you are communicating even when you think you're not a com you're not communicating everything that you do the permeal you know it every your your true personality permeates everything that you do so especially and it's got a lot of Jewish guys that I've had, they are the worst not worse no Indian dudes maybe worse than than Jewish you're saying guys. as far as dating lack of dating skills well because the culturally yeah. culturally it's the anxiety and the pressure that's where the, it comes for both of them it's from their moms right the mom and it's this expectation and then there's also this thing about you don't have to worry about social go to school get your education yeah. get your degrees make your money and what's interesting is that like the same way that you learn how to study and learn to be productive and learn how to handle money or learn how to handle business or engineering or whatever you you still need your 10,000 hours socially so if you don't have absolutely that, especially today way more than before because yeah. like in the past so I, I I coach men all over the world who are not not just Jewish guys. That's what I started with in the beginning. Right, but, right, right. Um, right. Yeah, I understood but, that, but I was just saying. Yeah, I, that's but a for, very for, difficult. Yeah, group but for to those for those cultures specifically, like it's sort of outdated because society's grown up differently. Like in the past, it was right. okay, grow up, be a doctor, and then you're successful. You'll get the women. It's fine. Right. It doesn't right. work like that anymore. No, no. It's your, your social proof and the way that you interact and integrate with other people is actually what elevates you to that other level. You can be a great doctor, but you can be the greatest doctor if your social skills are on point. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if you love what we're doing here, 
Go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archives starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Here's what I, what, give me an idea of like what what on a fundamental level how you would start like how do you start from the beginning like if you get a guy who's really well, I figure not- out what's going on with them and I figure out what their struggles are so some guys come to me and they have an issue with one woman that they've been hung up on for three years some guys come to me and they have an issue with all women in the sense that they put themselves up out there as much as possible uh, but they don't get any reactions or responses from women so they mm-hmm. cast a wide net. They have very little confidence in themselves, very uh, a very small view of their own self worth, and they yeah. get nothing back, which is obvious that they would get nothing back. So it's it's different for every single guy, but there's there's like a few different prototypes of the guys that come to me. But what are the, of, what are the, yeah. give me an idea of the prototypes that you like, you know? Yeah, it's the guy who's super successful, who can speak in front of a of a room of five hundred people, but can't go up to a, a woman and approach her and ask her for her phone number. It's another right. guy who is Mister IT, who's very technical and logical, who has difficulty talking to women as soon as he goes up and talks to her, his brain turns to mush and he can't think of a single thing to say. Mm -hmm. It's the guy who doesn't have any experience with women and who is 36 years old and is kind of frightened of women because he's yeah. he's ultimately afraid of rejection. It's right. the guy that constantly gets thrown into the to the friend zone because he doesn't know that it's okay to put your sexuality out there. So right. again, those those are the guys that I work with and so each of them come with me with different issues or different things that they want to work on and then I send them on on different paths right. based on what their needs are. What do you find is the the most common mistake that guys make? They do not go uh after what they want. They do not ask for what they want. They try to cover it up and hide it um, or they're not clear on what they want. So they'll take anything that they can get. Hmm. They settle. They settle. Uh, Yes. Or they settle for being lonely because they're doing it all wrong. Yes, absolutely. uh, Or they settle for a bitchy woman. It's interesting because they'll they'll also um, they don't think they're worthy of what they, they don't think they're worth they're worthy of what they're asking for. Yeah, because their so, evidence I mean, is that women reject them. So, okay, I'm going to take any woman I can get, woman I can get. She can treat me horribly and disrespect me on a constant basis. And yeah. It's fine because I'm not going to get anything else. And also, as as he as he lets this woman treat her disrespectfully, she loses attraction for him. Every totally. time he allows that to happen, totally. he he find, she finds him a little less attractive each time. Yeah. And so it's a, it's an interesting it's an interesting cyclical dynamic that happens where you just you really it's almost like they're working against themselves. Um the the other thing that I think is really interesting is um you know, how do you teach confidence do you know what i mean because ultimately yeah. that's what you got to do yeah well you teach confidence by first helping people figure out who they are and i know that's so unsexy and it's not like oh like this is the magic pill to getting me a- attraction from women but as you just said before when you were describing yourself like mm-hmm. First of all, you were a stripper, so you're already super confident with your body. And then you started to like look at women, acknowledge women, listen to women, figure out women. You had the experience there. But during that time, I'm guessing you were also figuring yourself out. Who am I? Who can I be to these women? How can I communicate with them so that they respond to me? Well, so you know what's mo- you know what's interesting even about that? Guys who I know who are strippers, right? There was a there's there's all people always think that there's this caveat that it kind of works out that way. And it really doesn't because what oh, happens is the strippers will they have access to so many women. And because they have access, there's a confidence that comes with the fact of having options, right? Yeah. The minute they stop stripping, there is no options. And then they are the worst because they right. don't, they have don't that. know what to do yeah. right, without that platform. So I help people build up their own platform. So like, again, very unsexy. But first, you figure out who you are, what your values are, what you want, what you'll allow, what your boundaries are with women, what the rules are to be with you. Mm-hmm. And then you figure out what kind of women you want in your life. You figure out who you want to be surrounded by, how you want to feel when you're around those women. Knowing those things 
instantly, it takes a, a while to get those things to mean something to you. Yeah. But right yeah. away, they they provide confidence for you. Because again, you're not casting that wide net. You're saying, no, I'm not going to allow a woman to talk to me like that. So therefore, no. I'm not going to date you. That's That builds confidence up over time. And yeah. then in yeah. tandem with that, I'm pushing them into social interactions that make them like slightly uncomfortable every single day mm. so that they can get work used that- to it. Yeah, work that confidence muscle and build it. It's exactly what I did. I used to be very shy, very insecure, very uncomfortable, total an- overanalyzer. I'm Jewish. I have to be totally overanalyzing right. everything every second. But what I did for myself was when I I was backpacking when I was younger, I was with my best friend who was super outgoing. She would go outside, come back with 10 new friends. I couldn't do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out how to speak. And so I pushed myself to go out every single day and speak to 20 people, literally just say hi to them. And then I was allowed to go home. And it took me two and a half hours the first day I had to do it. And I'm a, I am was a cute girl, a cute 23 year old girl <laughs> going out and saying hi, like nobody was going to slap me or punch me or throw a drink in my face. And I had difficulty for two and a half hours. It took me to complete that mission. The next day I went back out, it took me an hour and a half. The next day I went back out, it took me 30 minutes. The next day I went back out, I was done in 10 minutes. <laughs> and then I went to that next hurdle it's interesting because i have a same i have a similar kind of technique what i do is i i i i call it so it came from an analogy that i did it's uh i say you gotta lay five bricks a day so i, like I the, 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 the the analogy was that if you go in your backyard and you lay five bricks you take cement and you lay five bricks right um at the end of the year you will have a huge wall and the wall doesn't care whether you enjoyed it or you didn't enjoy it, whether you excited, whether you were inspired, but there's a wall. And because you've done it so many times, the bricks at the top are done much better than the bricks at the bottom because you yeah. just do repetition. You come through the. So it also gets to the point where I, I'll make a commitment. I'll make the guy make a commitment to talk to five women every day. I love it. Um, With no, with no, no expectation. Um, no expectation. No agenda. I don't want you to get the number. I don't want you to. I, I don't even want you to just talk to the pretty women. I want you to the ones you find unattractive, an old lady or this. And so that became. Yeah, that you got to begins... start at the bottom first and work your way up. I and love that. That's what I then, do. Too. And then it becomes such a it becomes a chore. Right. That. So I do five guys, five women a day for eight weeks mm-hmm. when the um by the time the second week is gone by. Right. So the second week, it's something it comes out to something like 85 women, a, yeah. a, a 85 was it a five, 35 women a day. It's like 70 women in two weeks. You're more into the fact that you. So this is interesting about men, because men have that, you know, the, the, when you say that women, are, a lot of times women can't remove the ego and see the empathy to give advice. What's interesting is that you never hear the terminology, a woman of her word. So. And I'm not saying that there's not women that keep that that don't keep their word, but there's no expectation. The expectation of yeah. being fickle and 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 fluid is is accepted. Yeah. Um, so what's in, but a guy it, that's a big thing for you know if you're not a man of your word, then how are you a man? And it's and so the commitment that they make me the word I make them give me their word that they'll do five a day, and then it becomes more about the commitment that they made to me than what they're actually doing, which yeah. allows them to remove themselves emotionally from the anxiety and it becomes, oh, I got Dante's going to jump on my shit if I don't. Right. And, I then, task. and then it's a task. And then yeah. and what happens is that task becomes more about me than about them, which, which is weird because they're trying to get a date. And then they are able to be more of themselves. They, they, they become more natural in their self and more confident in their own self because it becomes about the task as opposed to. Yeah. The and they're doing it within a community as well. So therefore it becomes fun. It's not this daunting task that they're doing by themselves where they feel like a big freak. They're doing it as a part of a team. That's now, when you say out of a team, what do you take a few guys? I mean, I'm saying you and him. Oh you're yeah. Team, all right, together, right, right. You're a team and you're trying to accomplish something. And right, that's right. something that men are, I mean, men and women are really good at doing it, but men and women, I mean, sorry, men specifically are, are really great at doing that. Like right. Having something that they're trying to accomplish and complete, having a goal and achieving it. And exactly what you said, when you distract 
from the task at hand, yeah. which freaks them out by themselves. Yeah, yeah. And you make it fun and engaging. And as part of a team, like we're buddies now doing this together, right. that makes it easier for them to do and accomplish. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an issue. And then once the anxiety, once the anxiety is overcome, then you got to, you, you got to build. The other thing is I find that the, the insecurity that is there is their personal insecurity. And women, a lot of times women are not even interested. They don't, they're not even aware of this insecurity that you have. They, because if you think about yeah. it, every, every woman, every woman, I, I would say this to guys all the time. You, you talk to a woman and she dates you, right? How does she know you? And guys, well, uh, you know, maybe she could tell. Like, I go, no, you tell her she, who you tell her who you, you are. are. You tell her mm -hmm. what your value is and so on and so forth. So it's interesting that you but when you're but when you when you have low self-esteem and you you don't think that you have value, you also communicate that. Yeah, because you don't know who you are and right. you don't know how to communicate it properly because you're trying to adjust it for somebody else's benefit. Right. So right. it's not going to come across properly and sincere. And so, it's yeah. also it's also interesting because when you speak about the instinctual aspect of this, which is which I thought that I think that I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but, you know, when decept deceptiveness to a woman uh, or, or, or I shouldn't say that, but um, indecisiveness mm -hmm. is like, perceived as as uh, deceptive. Dangerous. It's perceived as deceptive. So if you're indecisive, it's like, why, why are you not telling me? I know there's more to this. And so now a woman has to constantly think about this all the time is who's the guy who every time a woman goes out with a guy, she has to consider whether she was she could be raped or killed. I mean, Absolutely. that that is or get so, pregnant. Absolutely. Or any number of things yeah. could happen. But the yeah. your your indecisiveness is read as indeceptive, being deceptive. Deceptive is read as dangerous and dangerous is read. As, like, I, I got to get out. I'm, I don't even want to hear what you have to say. You make me feel uncomfortable. And a lot of times that's they don't interesting because even... that that was a that was a point I used to make a long time ago that I totally forgot about. Like, mm. She's reading it in her own way. So if yeah. you're nervous, you're jittery, you're like wishy-washy, you're all over the place, you're not really giving answers, you're just asking questions, she's not going to say, oh, that's so sweet, he's so nervous. She's going to say, get me the hell away from this guy. Sure. Yeah, He makes yeah. me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. If you yeah. feel uncomfortable, she's going to feel uncomfortable. And I think the, the other thing is the empathy from the guy to understand that, okay, I'm nervous and stuff, but what am I really communicating? Like you have to teach the empathy to go, if look, my intention is not to communicate this. And 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 so it's, it's interesting because in the whole Me Too era, guys are like, oh, you can't say anything. And I go, that's so not true. You can say everything. You, you just got to be you can honest. Say so much more now. That's yeah. the wonderful thing, because it's given it's given room for all this communication because people are trying to be more respectful and more clear with each other. So even mm. for guys that I work with, I tell them to announce the elephant, because for me, if I say out loud, Really nervous right now. So most podcasts that I get onto right away, I'll say I'm nervous because that I don't, instead of trying to cover it up in some right. way for myself, that's going right. to come across as insecure or exactly what you just said, indecisive, wishy-washy. But mm -hmm. if you say, I'm kind of nervous, it's endearing, it's human, and then mm -hmm. you can relate to it, move past it, and then you can talk more freely. So if some guy is nervous about kissing a girl, you can say, oh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about kissing you. I'm a little bit nervous to do it like mm. that. That can be genuine right. and authentic and sincere. And it can be attract. It's attractive, too. It's it can, um, and attractive and super sexy. I had a uh, I got a guy that was pretty famous and I consult him and uh, he said, you know, and he was he was doing my program and then he, he you know, he started really feeling himself and then something. Well, kind of kind of shut down where he wasn't he wasn't laying the five bricks and he got and he goes, man, I seen this girl. She was on the train and she was looking at me and I was looking at her and it was almost like she was looking at me like, come on, do it. Like, I'm yeah. like, come on, bag me up. Like, <laughs> come on, I'm making I'm giving you the and he just. He just couldn't he just couldn't do it. So it's interesting. I, I, you know, I say this all the time that fear, fear exists between when the opportunity is presented and how long it takes you to access the opportunity. Oh, I love that. The longer you take to access the opportunity, the more the fear grows and then ultimately it paralyzes mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, he says, yeah, I mean, she just kept looking at me like bag me up. I like I, it, it's I'm, funny that he knew that as well, yeah. like that he wasn't he wasn't translating it for himself as oh don't approach me i'm no, not with no, no. you like he said you're you're giving me a green light i'm paralyzed and i can't do it, it that's crazy 
And I said to him, what if you had just went to him? It's like, I really want to hit on you, but I'm nervous. And yeah. and I and he goes, I go, do you understand? You not understand how attractive that is to a woman that you're saying you're saying that her beauty or or the, the, the aura that she presents is so is so powerful that it mm-hmm. make it frightens me a little bit. And to say that makes you not frightened of it. You know what I mean? mean? Even the way that you just said that is super sexy. I would be responsive to any guy who said that. And that also empowers the person saying it because yeah. you, oh, yeah. you get comfortable afterwards because <laughs> you're saying it out loud, <laughs> right? Like, damn, shorty, I'm scared of you. <laughs> you uh, sexy. You, I think did, sexy. Andre did a dance. He like, yo, for real, I want to talk to you. the scariest bitch I ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm saying your beauty is like, you got me... You got me twisted. Word. Oh, so, <laughs> you right now. But it's like, and then when I said to them, do you understand how that is perceived? How that would mm-hmm. be perceived by her? That not only are you you you're honest because every woman, you know, honesty it breeds that safety. But the honesty in the fact of your vulnerability makes you not vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Like to represent that and to say that is is something that's that's yeah. That's really better you than can't, not you can't continuously say that. Like yeah. you can say that first yeah, yeah, to calm yeah, yourself yeah. down and then you got to get the confidence back up afterwards. You right, can't just right. be like, "Oh, now I can't answer your question because you're still intimidating me." Then it's right. like, "Get the f- echo." Yeah, I don't know yeah, if I can now, swear, but like, get like, away I let you, you I let you in. Yeah, you're in, and now you've you ruined it. Ticket to ride. Now you're gonna. <laughs> yeah, then now you're like, over. yo, you be running. Yeah. I love how you run. I mean, through, you've been <laughs> running through my mind all day. You're like, right. ugh, give me, beat yeah. it. And then she's like, no, I'm getting off at this stop. I never want to see you again. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's it's an interesting, really interesting. Um, Marnie, uh, how you've been doing? You said this for about 17 years now. Mm-hmm. What are the time. What is the biggest change? I mean, it's a. I feel like th- this generation is massively different. What are the biggest changes you've seen in dating? I mean, obviously, social media has come into play. So that is the that's the biggest change that I've and and online dating and app dating. That's the biggest change. So there's f- way more insecurities. Um, there's way more people who who treat other people like just ghosts in an in a in a. Uh, virtual space that they can treat horribly. So there's a lot more people. When you um, wait, explain that. What do you mean in, in terms of like, like I just mean that when you're on a dating app, nobody's real until you yeah. see them in person. When you yeah. have a face to face interaction, you're like, yeah. you're a real person. I can't really be a full jerk to you. I can be mm-hmm. a semi jerk to you mm-hmm. and tell you I have a boyfriend and I'm not interested. Yeah. But online, you can chat with them, ghost them for three weeks, come back to them again talk to them for two seconds, ghost them again. Like you can do a lot of things. I was talking to my aunt who is like in her sixties and she dates online and she goes, she's the sweetest person. Everybody goes. It just yeah. happens because they. You just think these are just like not real people, and you can just like say, "I don't want to talk to you anymore." I, I talk to them. If, I don't. Let me ask you this: Do you really think it's ghosting if you forgot? I don't think that's. I think ghosting is sort I of mean, an. To the, it's to an the person who's thing. not getting the response, it doesn't. Right. Yeah, they're but, like, "Ah, yeah, where did you go?" Right. Yeah, it's ghosting. Yeah. We were yeah. having. And, we had a four-hour conversation last night. Yeah. Where did you go? Why? And if you, you have a general. I mean, if you're talking for longer than four days online without having a next plan of having either a virtual call or a meeting in person, then you're That's wasting your time. Right. It's, yeah. it's it's far too drawn out. And it also depends what age category you're in. So if you're younger, if you're like in your 20s, then you take like one, maybe two days chatting online and then you, you escalate to that next level. If you are in your 30s or 40s, single parent. You take a little yeah, bit longer because you don't would get to you go say, online as, as often. Oh, are you saying just for logistics reasons? Just because time. I just don't. That people are not using it as often. But I think like the thing is, you know, when you click with somebody, you know when you yeah. want to take something to that next level. Yeah, and you you do it. And if you're unsure yeah. of it, then you also take it to that next level. So if you're chatting with somebody, you're like, I'm not Stop really sure if I like time. this person. Great. Stop wasting your time or go hop on a phone call. Go up on go hop on a virtual call and see. Am I attracted to them? Do I like them in 3D? Then you can mm-hmm. make the decision and then don't waste your time meeting them in person. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't.